and Cal. It might be the biggest breakthrough, uh, breakthrough rather, since the battery. Scientists at MIT saying they've engineered a new kind of battery that can power a car and many electronic devices, and it's just as reliable and powerful as state-of-the-art rechargeable batteries in use now. With us now, as always, to make sense of the unexplainable, uh, physics professor Michio Kaku, author of Physics of the Impossible. How are you doing, sir? Very good. Nice to see you. What are the brains at MIT come up with now? Well, Professor Angela Belcher of MIT may have scored a home run on this one. The holy grail of manufacture is to create a molecular factory that is using viruses and molecules to cut, splice, and dice other molecules to create computers, laptops, transistors, and batteries for your car. Now they reprogrammed a virus to do exactly that. The virus then acts how within what we consider to be a battery? Well, a virus cuts and splices other molecules together. So you take iron phosphate found in your laptop in a, a lithium battery, you glue it onto carbon, and at the key juncture, then you manufacture billions of these things, and that creates a lithium ion battery like what you find in your cell phone, like what you find in your laptop, and maybe even in your car. How, how long would you have a charge on that then if they're able to pull this off? Well, they were able to charge and recharge this battery a hundred times, meaning that it's a, a little bit less than the reliability of the average battery, but this is just a prototype. Now remember, this could set off a second industrial revolution. Imagine molecular factories creating Pentium chips, molecular factories creating batteries. Batteries are the weak link in the electric age. Pound for pound, gasoline has more energy than a battery. That's why we want to reduce the cost of a battery, increase the power, and then mass produce them by reprogramming viruses. You, you, you said something there. It, it, it could do what to the Industrial Revolution? It could create a second Industrial Revolution. You think it's that big? The first Industrial Revolution was based on mass production of large machines. The second Industrial Revolution could be molecular manufacture. Think about it, your cell phone has more computer power than all of NASA at the beginning of the space age in 1969 when we put men on the moon. That's how small transistors are. And think of car batteries. Well, why do we have to have hybrids? Why can't we have fully electric cars and replace gasoline? All of it depends on molecular manufacture, which was out of reach until now. Well, so if they can master this thing, it would change the way we do so much. Now listen, uh, Michio, we had the Zero S motorcycle. I don't know if you've heard about that before. No. They developed it in Santa Cruz, California. It was in our studio yesterday. It runs on battery power only. They believe it's the first legitimate motorcycle. There's the Zero battery, as you see on your screen. You see that? They can go 60 miles an hour for a period of 60 miles before it's recharged. They consider this revolutionary. But now what you're describing could go much beyond what they were able to do in Santa Cruz if you can master the new technology. This cuts across the board. We're talking about a new way of manufacturing almost everything. Instead of having robots that are gigantic and clumsy, you now have molecular robots because what does a virus do? A virus cuts and splices and dices other molecules. That's why you get a cold. That's why you sneeze. So why not use that molecular ability to create a whole plethora of things for the computer age and the electric age. And so this could remove many bottlenecks in our manufacturing just, industry. Just to be clear, you're, you're, you're a believer, right? In molecular manufacture. That could be the future, a second uh, industrial well, if, revolution. If you say it, I believe it, okay? Thank you, Michio. Okay, anytime. Mich Michio Kaku, back with us again today. Physics of the Impossible is the book he penned. Nicely done.